I've been working for Cornell University for about 33 years now. I'm in charge of the grapevine breeding, grapevine genetics program at Cornell. We're looking right now at a vineyard that's being used for genetic studies to understand the, uh, the inheritance of disease resistance, specifically powdery mildew resistance. We're out here today making some crosses, some uh, pollinations, hybridizing grapevines, and uh, the process starts really um, the previous year when you start thinking about the crosses you'd like to make this year. You determine which parents uh, have adequate hardiness, disease resistance, what quality features you'd like to combine from the two parents. Today we're working on a seedling from a cross that was made in 2008. One parent was a, a fairly disease resistant parent from the muscadine grape that carries the run one gene for powdery mildew resistance. And the other parent of this particular vine was Tokai Friuliano. So out in this vineyard, we have a number of crosses with Merlot, with Tokai Friuliano, Pinot Gris. And these are some of the quality vinifera parents that we've used recently uh, to try to incorporate their you know, highly regarded wine quality into the next generation of grapes that we're developing. So we're trying to develop descendants of this that might have some of the Tokai characteristics along with very high disease resistance. And that leads to uh, what you do exactly during pollination season. So pollination season is that time of year when grapes are flowering. Uh, the process starts for us when the female vines are just about ready to flower. So we catch them when there's just a few flowers open and then we go in and try to emasculate the rest of the flowers. And what that means is we try to remove the anthers which produce pollen before they actually shed their pollen. Normally cultivated grapes like Chardonnay, Merlot, Thompson Seedless, they're all self-fertile. They're all self-pollinated. They don't require bees or other varieties nearby to fertilize and set seed and, and set fruit. But what that means for a breeder is that we have to go to these vines just before they open and prevent them from self-pollinating. So what I'm doing is I'm going down about one third of the way on, onto the flower and removing the top part of the flower. And what you see left is the part that turns into the berry with developing seeds. Once we finish removing all the anthers from these clusters that we're emasculating, we then bag these clusters, which prevents any pollen from getting into these clusters, and we keep them isolated until we can come back the next day or a few days later and apply the pollen we would like to be used to fertilize these these clusters. So in other words, we're just trying to trick Mother Nature into making the kinds of crosses we want to make rather than ones that might occur naturally in the vineyard. What you're looking at now is a cluster that was emasculated several days ago and it's been allowed to develop in, inside a bag in isolation so there's no pollen that's, that's come by through the wind or via insects. So there are, there are two basic ways in which we make crosses. One way is we directly use an open male cluster, a cluster from a male vine that's currently flowering that we've just cut off the male vine and brought over as, as a source of fresh pollen. And that involves waving the cluster around and, and touching that cluster to the emasculated female cluster to apply the pollen. The other way that we make crosses is using a brush and using a stored so source of pollen. We bring it out here, warm it up, shake the tube up a little bit to really get the pollen separated from the anthers and use a, a sterile brush to brush that pollen directly onto the flowers. So we just finished making crosses in, in the field and our window of opportunity is, is over and it's time to just let the, uh, the crosses develop and let the fruit develop in the bags, on the vines. When the clusters are fully ripe, we come back and we hand harvest each individual cluster, keeping very careful track of of what cross each cluster resulted from. Now it's a process of berry by berry extracting the seeds. Now with Vitus Gen, with, with the tools of DNA sequencing and DNA marker testing in our hands, what we do is we grow our seedlings for about a six week period. And as soon as those seedlings are at a stage when we can take a part of leaf from each seedling, we then take those leaf tissue samples, send them to a laboratory for analysis, and the laboratory will tell us which seedlings are the ones we want and which ones are the ones we don't want. So the ones we want are the ones that have 
genes for powdery mildew resistance, downy mildew resistance. DNA testing for the presence of a gene is more precise than field testing uh, for observations of disease resistance under variable field conditions.